faces we don't know that are, are viewing the uh, recordings uh, or the prayer nights and benefiting from it. So we will be recording that. So, uh, you know, just to ask you not to get up and move around and <laughs> do shuffles and, and not talk to each other and all that. Uh, when we start our prayer time, the recording stops for them and then we'll put for them a, uh, a prayer on the screen and then we will be praying live with the issues and things that we need to, uh, to address in our, our prayer time. So just so you're aware. So uh, we're going to begin with a word of prayer and then Noah is going to lead us in a, in a few songs as uh, we have a little time of praise and worship as well. So let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for, for the blessing and for the joy of being able to return our prayer gathering inside your house. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege that you give us in doing so. We thank you for the brethren that are here tonight so that we can uh, be able to present ourselves to you and, and lift our prayers before you and just uh, await and see you working in and through the life of your church in answer to the prayers of your people. We give praise to you, our Father, because you are such a good, good God. And we thank you for everything that you do, Lord, to take care of us, to sustain us, to strengthen us. For the mercies that you show to us daily. Lord, if your mercies were not new to us every morning as they are, uh, we, we know that we just would not be. But we thank you that they are. That you're patient with us, that you're faithful to us. And Lord, that the plans that you have with our lives are good, not evil. And they are truly to give us a future and to give us a hope. And so we just want to pray for your guidance, Lord. And as we invest these next few moments in song to lift up your name and to praise you. And also, Father, that by your spirit, you would guide us when we uh, return and reflect on your word and, and also uh, uh, invest that time in prayer. So thank you for this privilege and for this opportunity. In Christ's name, amen. Let's sing. Let's stand. of truth thou hast for me place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free silently now i wait for thee ready my god thy will to see open my eyes illumine me spirits divine open my ears that i may hear Voices of truth thou sendest clear, and while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, spirits divine, open my mouth and let me bear. Gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, spirits divine. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free silently now i wait for thee ready my god thy will to see open my eyes illumine me spirits divine Open the eyes 
eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we cry, holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high. your power and love as we cry holy 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 spanish santo 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 yo quiero verte holy 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 continue our service. Father, as we take this time now to enter the time of reflection on your word, we want to pray for the guidance, for the help of your Holy Spirit. Not only, Lord, that we may understand, but that our eyes would be open to your truth 
and our hearts would increase in the light for your truth to not only know it, but to apply it in our life as well. So we thank you for these moments you give us now as we prepare to come to prayer, but Lord, by first reflecting on your word. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. And you may be seated. If you have your Bibles, I will ask you to have them open in Psalms 119. Psalms 119. 119. Now, in a moment, I will give you a couple passages or verses in Psalms 119 that we will use for our reflection. But tonight, what I want to do is have you focus uh, with me on some of these selective verses in Psalm 119. And uh, some of you may already be aware, you may know, that Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. And it's also located pretty much at the very center of the Bible. Uh, I remember some years ago, uh, and I think I've shared this story before, but there was a, a gentleman, uh, a brother in another church that uh, told me that one time his pastor was out of town and they asked him to lead the Wednesday night uh, prayer service. And as part of leading the service, he had to lead uh, the music. Uh, and then also some scripture reading, and then proceed with a devotional. So he said he, he didn't prepare himself getting there, and he kind of did everything, uh, you know, on the fly, as they say. And so he got there, and he picked a couple of hymns, and led the couple of hymns, and then when he realized on his notes it was time for scripture reading, so the first psalm that came to his mind was Psalm 119. So he asked him to turn to Psalm 119. And so if he was holding his Bible like this, Psalm 119 is right here. So he starts to read Psalm 119 and he turns the page and he continues reading Psalm 19, but 119, but his eyes are scanning through the page and realizing the next chapter isn't there yet. And so he's still reading, but with his fingers, he kind of flips over and realizes the next chapter is still not there yet. And so he didn't know what he had gotten himself into uh, when he called for Psalm 119. Uh, it's just not one of those passages that you read the total one in a moment of scripture reading. You select a portion and, and you focus there. So that's some truth about Psalm 119. But Psalm 119 also falls in the category of what are called the acrostic psalms. And the acrostic psalms, are, it means that they're divided in, in different stanza. Psalm 119 uses the Hebrew alphabet as, its, as the breakdown of its stanzas. And there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And so there are 22 stanzas in the, psalm, in the book of Psalm, or in the chapter of Psalm 119. There's some interesting facts, and I'm just going to share just a couple of them concerning the number 22 and the significance of that number. As I already pointed out, it is the, uh, uh, the number of the uh, consonants that are in the Hebrew alphabet, and so they start from the first letter unto the last letter, and that's how Psalm 119 breaks down into 22 different stanzas. But 22, what's interesting is that it's also the number of generations from Adam to Jacob. And another significant thing about that is that when you take the number 22 and you there's this formula with the Hebrew alphabet and the numbers, uh, because let me throw this in there also. The Hebrew alphabet and Greek alphabet are also what they, they call uh, letters that are also numbered as well. And so there's some significance in there. So when you do that with the Hebrew alphabet and you get that number 22 and you do those letters that come out at the end, uh, the actual number that turns out in that alphabet or, or in that equation is 541. 541 uh, signifies Israel, which is kind of interesting. And Jacob being the 22nd in the generation from Adam to Jacob, 
Uh, and then Jacob is the one whose name is changed to Israel when he becomes the prince of God. I just thought that's kind of pretty interesting, you know, just to think about that and the significance of number 22. And also in the Hebrew, or, or rather in the Jewish canon of the Bible, there are 22 books in that, uh, in that canon. So the number 22 is very significant. It's in here in, the, in Psalm 119. But one of the things that this helps us to understand is the, uh, uh, the great riches that are found not only in Psalm 119, but in all of Scripture. There's so many riches uh, in the truth of God's Word that, that are there to, to bless us and to guide us in the ways that, that God has for us. And so Psalm 119 is, is filled with, uh, with expressions of praise and, uh, and celebration also of the Word of God. And you know, not only because it's the longest chapter in the Bible, but Psalm 119 says more about God's Word than any other section in the whole Bible in, in expressing the, the worship to the Lord uh, for His Word and the value of His Word. And so, I, you know, again, that's something that I thought was, was pretty interesting. But as we continue navigating through the, uh, the days of troubles that we are experiencing and uh, the increasing difficulties of our days, the confusion that is out there as well, you know, the wisdom of God's Word is of, of even greater value now than it's ever been in our times. I mean, it's always been, it has that. God's Word should have always been central in our lives. But as we consider the days in which we're living in now and trying to make sense of what's going on, there is nothing greater than turning to God's Word, not only for understanding some of what's unfolding from the perspective of what God has always said and what God is doing, but the way to encourage our hearts in the midst of this so that we're not discouraged, so that we're not, we don't succumb to uh, the confusion that is there and, and, uh, and the troubles don't overwhelm us. So for tonight's devotional, I wanted to highlight uh, four key verses. Uh, and I'm going to break this down into sharing two of them next week with you. But tonight I want to look at two particular verses. And the theme that they're both related to has something to do with our eyes. Now our eyes are very important. Physically, they're very important, aren't they? And it's not until you start feeling like you're losing sight, and with the majority of us here wearing glasses, I think we all understand what that's like. I remember when I was little and uh, my mom would uh, sew and she would get her needle and thread and she would call me and say, okay, put the thread through the eye. And through the eye of the needle, of course, not my eye, but the eye of the needle, because she couldn't see. And I would get that, and even in the dark almost, and just put it through there, and it was nothing. And she would tell me, boy, what she would give to be able to see again. I didn't, still didn't understand what she meant by that because, you know, I could see. But now that I'm older and I do have issues with my eyes, now I, I understand the importance of being able to see. But it's not about just the ability to be able to see, but also an understanding of what our eyes are seeing that also matters. And so as we look at this psalm, the first verse that I want you to turn to and reflect on is verse 18. If you look at Psalm 119 and verse 18, and there in verse 18, it says, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. Now, what I found so interesting, and maybe ironic, is that navigating through uh, today's troubles, afflictions, and even the confusion that we're going through, and, and, and add to that the temptations that are out there, it's been great to look for answers in different directions, or it's been tempting, rather, to look for answers in different directions or in different places. The psalmist here points out the importance of what our eyes see. When we find ourselves in trouble, we look for help, don't we? When we find ourselves in moments of confusion, 
uh, and we have many questions, we look for answers. The temptation is to look in the wrong places. In the, in the moment of urgency or the pressures that we're under needing an answer, we can be tempted to look in the wrong places. And when we turn, uh, matter of fact, to this world uh, looking for the answers, for the most part, what we're going to find is faulty information that is not really going to guide us in the ways of truth, but cause us more stumbling than anything else. People today will turn to, and we hear this quite often right now, let's turn to the science. Or people are turning to the media. Or people are turning to the government. Or people are turning to the wiser, more eloquent neighbor. Maybe he knows or she knows a little more than I do. People are turning to their horoscope. And I don't know if you're aware, but even mediums have increased in popularity during this pandemic year or this, this season of pandemic. People are turning to mediums looking for answers. And the interesting thing is that wherever they turn to, they're looking for what appeases them as an answer, not so much for truth. As a matter of fact, for the most part, people don't want to know the truth because as the old saying in the old movie, they can't handle the truth. But if we're really interested in the truth, we're not going to find it out there. We're only going to find it in God's word in understanding God's word. And so for us as the people of God, we have to understand that we have been blessed with the greatest resource ever to be able to give us answers, to give us wisdom, to bring us guidance, uh, to give us a word of, of edification so that when we feel down, we can get picked up. We have the greatest resource that is a light in darkness in order to shine the way for us. Or even as it's found in Psalm 105, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The value of the word of God. And we have been resourced with that word in order to give us direction. But yet for us as the people of God, we have been blessed with all of this great resource. But a lot of times we fail to take advantage of what God has given to us. And we fall into the temptation, looking in all kinds of other places for all kinds of other answers in order to meet the need at the moment, but not really seeking the truth to guide us for eternity. And so instead of falling into the temptation of uh, looking for answers in different places uh, from other resources, unreliable resources, why not make it our prayer to ask God to open our eyes that we may see wondrous things in his law, on his word. That's a beautiful prayer request. We are in need, literally in need, of having our eyes open to see again. And the saddest thing is that a lot of times you don't realize that your, your eyes are fading. I'm talking about uh, physically or spiritually. You don't realize that your eyes are fading until you're confronted with the light or the truth. And right now, I know for me at night when I drive, and probably most of you have the same issue now, um, light bothers me because the glare and all that kind of affects me and it kind of blinds me in certain ways. Well, light's not the problem. The problem is my eyes because light is good. It actually lightens or brightens the way. But the fact that I cannot see right is an indicator my eyes have a problem. In the same way in the spiritual life, when the light of God's word shines on us and God speaks to us and we see it as some other than a word from God, if we may see it, for example, as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, something negative in our life or Oh, that, that bothers me. Well, that's an indicator your spiritual eye has a problem. Because when the word of God shines on us, it ought to encourage us. Even when God's word is rebuked to us, we ought to delight in that, that God would still rebuke us because we're his children. If he doesn't, that's when we ought to be concerned, right? But it's not till the light shines that we don't know whether or not, or that we fail to know, whether or not we have a problem in our spiritual sight. 
But when God's light shine, it is a blessing to us. And so what a, what a prayer. Lord, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. Now, the challenge of allowing God's word to, uh, to be the source of wisdom, understanding, uh, and that which that we use to, to norm our lives, to live right before God, that's of utmost importance. That role of God's word in our lives is of great importance. The value of God's word in our lives is of great importance. The revelation that we receive from God's word is, is key to our stability in walking with God, in being able to stay grounded when the earth is shaking. The word of God is the anchor to our life in the midst of the storms. And, and it's the foundation to our feet. And Jesus said it when he preached the Sermon on the Mount. You might remember that. At the end of that Sermon on the Mount, he says, He who hears my word and does it, I compare that one to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rains came and the winds blew. It means the storms of life came. But when it was all over, the house still stood because the word was the foundation to that family, to that life, to that to that, those feet, to that house. And the word of God is the foundation to us. And when God reveals his word to us, he is speaking to us. He's given us something to anchor our lives in. But on the other, on the other side of that coin, we have to understand that when there is no revelation from God, when God is not speaking, when God's word is not open to us and it's not clear to us, the scripture says that the people cast off restraint. That means that they, uh, that they have no boundaries to keep them safe. That means that, they, uh, that as a result of not having those boundaries, they do what they believe is right in their own understanding, not in the understanding of the Lord. Again, that's why we need the Word of God. And we need the Word of God to be our guide. And so again, what a prayer. Lord, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things from your Word. The other verse that I want you to look at is verse 37. Psalm 119 and verse 37. And there in verse 37 it says, Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. You know, one thing we must understand concerning the, the health of our walk with God is that our mental diet is also of utmost importance. Where do we get our mental diet? For the major part, our mental diet comes from all of the information that we gather through our senses, whether it be our eyes or our ears or, or what we feel or uh, you know, the five senses that we have and how we use them. We're constantly gathering information through our senses. But let's talk about the use of our eyes as a sense. Here again, the psalmist says, turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. There are things that uh, we do need to guard against looking at or placing our eyes on. As we seek to understand that, that our, our spiritual health is, uh, and our mental diet is of utmost importance in our life, then we'll understand that wherever it is that we set our eyes to, to look upon or what we look towards in the distance or even what we read in, in, uh, in, 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 you know, from, whether from the Word of God or for everything else that we turn our eyes to set on and read and absorb that information, that we need to be very careful what we're picking up. We need to be very careful what we're taking and we need to be very careful where we set our eyes. You may remember that Adam and Eve's fall was set in motion with the wrong look. Remember that? And they looked at that apple in the wrong way and it started their motion in the wrong way. You remember the story also of Lot's wife who, who turned into a pillar of salt because she looked in the wrong direction. God told her not to look in that direction. But when she looked in the direction she was not supposed to, then she turned into that pillar of salt. And there's other stories in scripture where a person's life literally changed, in some cases for eternity, because of where they set their eyes and they stumbled. 
or they fell. So it matters where our eyes go. It matters what we look at. It matters the programs that we watch. It matters what we read. It matters what it is we set our eyes on to entertain ourselves. And so again, here, the wisdom of the psalmist is a prayer. Turn my eyes away from looking at worthless things. And so while the temptation may be great to look for answers in, in different sources, and while we may discover that information to, to be uh, faulty at best at times, uh, those things are dangerous. And so we ought to make it our prayer, just like the psalmist says, turn my eyes away from looking at worthless things. And the altern alternative to that is at the end of the verse when he says, revive me in your way. Where should my eyes be? My eyes should be on the ways of the Lord. And so as we prepare to pray tonight, I want these two scriptures to be part of what guides us in our praying this evening. We're going to invest time first to give thanks to the Lord for different things. And then we're going to give, uh, take time to pray to the Lord for some specific things guided by these truths. Lord, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your word. And Lord, turn my eyes from looking at worthless things.